Talk about the skill sets of the people who are going to be able to manage through this. I imagine they must be data experts if they're going to start with data. Okay, so I know this is going to sound a little bit like doom and gloom, but if you look at the entire uh, tech industry, and you look at the entire talent in the tech industry and say how much of this talent can handle data, it's anywhere between 9 to 11%. If you look inside that 9 to 11% and say, how many of them can handle AI models? Handle, so like LLM ops, ML ops, this is 1%. How many can actually train and build those models is anywhere between 0.1 and 0.3%. I know this okay. is doom and gloom, but this is where we are as an industry at the moment. So if you don't have that talent, guess what nobody does. So I think we need to step back and start relying on a buy versus build. There's going to be a lot of spend in these areas. Mm. Uh, a lot of these spend, a lot of training and data is what drives spends in AI. It's not the model itself, it's the amount of training effort required. A lot of this training effort, unfortunately, at the moment has to be EPE funded or big tech funded. That's what we're going to see for the next three quarters. But in all of this, depending on what data you have and how much proprietary data you have, spend much more time in how can that data be used. The data can be used for three purposes, either to optimize a process, or create new revenue, mm. or expand your top line. Once you know what these are, then come to a technical architecture which gives you a buy versus build. In there is your solution. Okay. We'll talk about uh, where sourcing comes into play. We're known for sourcing. We spend a lot of time helping our clients source technology. And how do you inject generative AI into basic sourcing principles? We'll have to look at this world in two ways. Uh, sourcing for AI, world one. World two, how does what we've been doing over the last 20 years change mm. through AI? So if I look at the first world, sourcing for AI, I know it's all about use cases at the moment. I mean, we're seeing this across right. the plane. So in these use cases, you'll get from system integrator, creators, you'll also have this from hyperscalers who want to do this for you. This is experimentation. Set the guardrails. Remember that some of these experiments are going to need to scale. Go ahead of that and set the stage for cognitive infrastructure. You need to have the landing zone on where this lands and the laws of physics are going to dictate where it lands. Egress mm. uh, costs, uh, what is your, what are you, do you need high speeds or low speeds? Do you need low latency or high latency? Mm. It's not going to be all in the cloud. You're going to see edge data centers, you're going to have AI ready laptops, AI ready clients. That's where the investments are going. So as we have these experiments running, set, set the stage for how do you buy experiments? Is it, mm. is it, use case by use case, is it pod by pod, but also how do you scale? What is the architecture runway? What's the cognitive infrastructure needed for it? I think this is the world you'll see for the next three to four quarters. Mm -hmm. Now comes the but. But one day, you're gonna start buying models. Today, you, we're gonna buy labor and software and hardware mm -hmm. for AI. Tomorrow, we're gonna buy data and models. So get prepared for that too, because that's a rabbit hole on itself. Like I just spoke about proprietary data okay. and um, copyright to data. So that's world one. I think we're at the start of world one. Sourcing for AI. Sourcing for AI.